Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video, where today, I'm going to be sharing my updated Cove to Roth sets with you all. And first up, we've got the Thunder Light Bowgun set that I'm going to be using. And the new Jar Blitz Thunder has Critical Element built into it, so that opens up a whole lot more options for damage. So, as you can see, I put in a ton of skills with this armor set. The main ones that you really, really need are the Critical Eye and Maximum Might. The Thunder Attack is for more attack on your Thunder Ammo. The Free Element is to get an extra shot. Part Breaker is more damaged parts that are breakable because Kulf Roth has a mantle that you do a ton of Thunder Attack to. And that's what our main goal is going to be. We're going to shoot the mantle as many times as possible to break as many parts as we possibly can. And the Special Ammo Boost is to boost the power of the Wyvern Blast. And that's pretty much it. Now the Ice Light Bow Gun. Since I didn't have to build any part breaker, since her horns do not get affected by it, the main thing I went for was just getting the Xenogiva set bonus, along with the free element for the extra shot, so that we'd have more chances to do more damage. But once again, the weapon we're using, the Jar Blitz Ice, has critical elements on it, so it opens up more options. So we got max critical eye, max maximum might for the most affinity we possibly can get. And each of the light bow guns are have three recoil suppressor mods and have been augmented for affinity. Alright, next up we have the Greatsword. And for the Greatsword, your main goal for Kul Taroth is to break the horns and get a mount in the final phase. Now I'm not saying you can just walk around and do nothing the entire fight. No, you should be helping your team break parts to put her in her fury state and then once you get into that final phase you should take out your glider mantle and try to get a mount if you don't already have a mounting weapon. The great sword is probably the best weapon for mounting since it does a ton of mounting damage whenever you can land them. Once again, here's the build, and that's going to be pretty much it. Moving on to the longsword, the first longsword build. So for this build, it's the most damage you can get with the Divine Slasher with the most affinity. As you can see, you could actually get more damage by putting in a peak performance, but uh, or a handicraft if you so choose. But I chose the extra mighty jewel. But once again, you can put in whatever you want. You don't have to follow the build exactly. I think it might actually be wise to put in another handicraft jewel to extend that white sharpness by another 10 hits but you can do whatever you like. Alright, moving on, we've got the next longsword build, the one that I personally like to use against Kulv anyway. The Teroth Sword Fire. It doesn't have the highest raw. It's definitely not going to beat the Divine Slasher in terms of raw, but in terms of sharpness, it's got a ton of white. You don't have to build any handicraft. You've got like 40 hits there which is more than a Divine Slasher with Max Handicraft. So you can build a ton of raw attack. And if you really, really want to, you don't have to build the Max Peak Performance. You can go with something like Mighty, like you do for the Divine Slasher to get more affinity. As you can see, 95% on weak spots is a ton of affinity. It's not 100%. You would have to take out something else, like another peak performance, by swapping out the chest piece, putting it back to Draken, changing out the helmet for Nergigantes, and go from there. And I think I might actually uh, overwrite this. Alright, so next up we've got the Dual Blades, and the Dual Blades is personally one of my favorite weapons to use against Kulv Taroth. And as you can see, we've got 45% affinity, but that will be an extra 50% against weak spots, so that ends up being 95%. And I threw in 
part breaker and bombardier, so bombs do more damage and you break parts faster. And that's pretty much it for the dual blades. Next up, we've got the Jar Dagger's Ice. So for these ones, you need Handicraft to get White Sharpness, but that's not that big a deal. Since you only need, well, you only need two to get white, but I put in three, so you have an extra couple hits. And as you can see, we've got 50% affinity, and then factoring in Tenderizer, we got 100% against weak spots, which her horns are weak spots. And you can hit her horns quite a few times with the dual blades. In fact, I think it's more times than the great sword, the long sword, any other melee weapon can actually hit them, since you do more hits, but they do more damage per hit. You just do a ton of them. In terms of damage, I would only use these dual blades if I already had a team that had a mounting weapon, being an insect glaive, a hammer, or a great sword. Has light bow gun for status, and then another third DPS option. That is when I would pull out the dual blades and do the most amount of damage I possibly could whenever she falls to the ground during her trips. And that's pretty much all for the dual blades. So we're moving on to Insect Glaive. Now, Insect Glaive, it's, um, it needs Handicraft to get white, so I didn't get to build any Part Breaker or Bombardier. So I went with raw damage instead. And this new Jarred Glaive Spark has critical elements, so we went off that as well. And for the Kinsect we're using... I don't think I actually changed this one. Oh, no, I did. Okay. So I have a couple Pseudocaths. Not just one. I have one for Thunder, one for Ice, so I don't have to... Well, I can't really change it in the middle of a quest, but... I can change the kinsect. I can't change the element on the kinsect. So moving on to the Jar Glaive Ice. Your main goal is to mount Kolv Taroth in the final phase. Get that mount to bring her down so that your DPS options, like the Great Sword, Hammer, Dual Blades, can do a ton of damage. I know I'm, there's Switch Axes and Charge Blades, I'm just saying those as examples. <laughs> And, as you can see, there's 45% affinity base. And then tenderizer factors in 95%. That is 95% affinity flying through the air. Avoiding most of her attacks, since most of them hit the ground, but there are a couple that will hit you in the air, so you gotta be careful. And, as this set is going to be all attack focused, there's no defensive skills. You will get one hit by some attacks, so you have to be careful. Alright, so that's going to be it for my Arch-Tempered Kul'v Taroth builds. If you've enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel, where I post gaming videos like this almost every day. And with that said, I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh, bye bye